And don't be in a hurry if you need a little bit of a two-step there at the top to let them keep running and save yourself some room. Set, go, Liv. <laughs> Off by a mile. Good eyes right at the top, bud. And let's make sure that we're aware of the scenario, okay? Over your head. <laughs> Those are not high percentage shots. You excited to go to the Cape? Yeah. Yeah, me too. It'll be fun. I like family and definitely football, and that's the way I was raised. The way my dad grew up, and I think that's kind of how I, you know, I took to that because that was the things I, I saw him like, and I liked those things the most too. I went to Michigan State after John Carroll to, to be a graduate assistant for Coach Saban. We had a good season then, and he ended up leaving in November to take the LSU job. I think he had his staff pretty well set, and I chose to come back home. You know, I just, there was some changes that had happened there. I, I helped my dad coach for that year, and I found a job in Cleveland. It was actually a plastics company, um, and I started there, I think, in February, and then Laura started in April, mm -hmm. I think it was. It was kind of fate, almost, like I was fortunate enough to meet her. And then Brian Dayball, who I'd worked with at Michigan State, called me. He was at New England that first year when Bill was here in 2000. And then he called me and he said, hey, we may have another entry level job. If you're interested, I'll stay in touch. You know, we'll see how it goes and all that. And so um, shortly after the season ended, I had an opportunity to come up here and she came with me and that was her first exposure to football. Got the phone call from Brian, he hung up and he said, do you want to go to Boston? And I said, I love Boston. I'd been to Boston a few times. I came to visit. I landed in about a waist deep of snow and he drove me to the residence inn in Foxborough and I was like, this is not Boston. It took about seven years to finally settle in, embrace it, be super supportive all the time. But those were those like really grinding years. I worked and he worked and yep. we just, we made it work. And, mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it wasn't instant. I don't think it's instant for anybody. We were betting on the way we felt about each other. We were poor. <laughs> we were, we were poor. I wasn't poor before I moved oh, neither here. Neither was I, made but we were poor <laughs> here. I think the, the fact that we made it through the first year or two you know, where I wasn't even making enough to get an apartment. You know, she right. actually had to come up here first and get a job or two jobs before we were able to actually afford an apartment. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of bet on that. And we were right, we got engaged at the Residence Inn. Yeah. Big splash. Do you want to go shopping with me? Yeah. Or in the water. Yeah. Do that. Oh. We were close. I would say in coaching, um, you know, you really need to be a strong partnership because it's hard to be a good coach and, and do all the things you need to do and spend all that time. She'll call me and she knows, like, I can't come home. You know what I mean? You know, if we have water in our basement or the toilet's leaking or this happened, you know, there's nothing I can, there's nothing I can do. She just handles it. Yeah. And you go, when you're going and changing areas of the country and your kids are dealing with things and if she's not on board with it and we're not together, then it, that would be really tough in coaching. Really tough. Mm. They told you to make coffee. Yeah. Make it better than anybody ever did it before. They tell you to go get a guy at the airport, do it better than anybody ever did before. And, and, and that, everything else sort of works itself out if you function that way. Yeah, my dad, I remember that conversation vividly. So I tried to take the approach, whatever they gave me, I wanted to do it better than they, they had had it done before. You know, their confidence in me must have been rooted in something that they, they saw. I never questioned any, any responsibility I've been given. When he made me the coordinator after being the quarterback coach, whatever he decided, I just always felt like he sees that I'm ready. Jack has Sammy. So if we see that again, you may end up going to Sammy because he's got a long way to go. And so I've just always believed his confidence in me. 
um, you know, should give me confidence to be able to do the job the right way. Nice job. Great job. Way to go. Is it midnight? Yeah, like yeah, let's it. go. We got work to do. All right, here we go, boys. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's it, Rexer. That's the way to practice. You need to know who you're dealing with. Until they know you care about them, you know, it's hard for you to push the right buttons. I'll talk to you about those two things after practice. You need to be invested in, you know, your players and your staff, uh, their lives. And we're not really getting a lot of 89, 92 degree days, are we? And then you can kind of develop your own rapport with each one of them. Some of them need a little bit of a hard line drawn in the sand. Every day it's something. Drop ball, fumble, I mean, come on, buddy. At the end of the day, all you're trying to do is help them get better. Yep. You don't have to go to the goal line and be a robot, right. but we're not yeah. sticking at the, at the line of scrimmage. Back in 2001, I asked him, I said, Lawyer, what's the most important thing for a coach to do? He said, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care if you played in the league before. I don't care anything about that. What I care is, is that you're helping me become a better football player. And he said, if you're prepared and the information you're giving me is going to help me perform my job, then I'm going to listen to whatever you say. And that's really stuck with me, you know, for 20 years. Bam! I mean, he ain't going to buy it if you, don't, if you don't look like you're going to look for the ball. Your responsibility is to, is to take the variables that you have on your team and match them up the best you can against the opponent the next week against their variables, which ultimately their strengths are different than ours. And so we have to protect our weaknesses. It's goal line jumbo. It's goal line jumbo. It's goal line jumbo. There's definitely an art to you know, figuring out the right way to attack each week. Ultimately, they're the artists. Maybe you look at it more like a songwriter. You know what I mean? They're gonna sing it, but we might have a lot to do with the lyrics. He takes the snap, he's gonna run it to the right, cuts it upfield, and he waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots! Too so easy. Oh, yeah. If I'm doing my job right, and if our offensive staff's doing our job right, there's not a player in the league that couldn't fit in here. So we're, we're just working on things we need to work on relative to our operation, okay? I try to communicate directly what I'm looking for and what I, what I expect from them that give them confidence that if we do this right, it's gonna work. There it is! Yes, Devin Ross! That's it! You learn that you have to show appreciation and vocalize that mm -hmm. a lot. He, has, he does a remarkable job. Um, showing appreciation and I don't think I ever hear him hang up the phone without telling somebody that he's thankful for whatever they've done, whatever their, their part mm -hmm. is. There's one thing I've learned about that. I mean, we have, there's fans all over the world and they have an opinion. Um, and some people are certainly gonna agree with your decisions, uh, the things you do, and some people are not. At the end of the day, I have a responsibility to my wife and my kids to try to, to make the best decisions uh, that I can make for them. And at that time, I thought that was the right thing to do. Whatever comes with making the right decision, I'm fully, um, I'm fully able and capable of handling uh, whatever that burden is relative to criticism. If it was just about me, then I wouldn't be doing my job as a father and as a husband. Um, I'd love to go for like a week, wouldn't you? Too low, huh? Yeah, that's what I told you on the big one. <laughs> You're funny. I get. We're gonna catch one this time. Good throw, girl. You ready? <laughs> oh! I went under you. He's very committed to his family. Very, very committed to his family. They love getting to go to the kids stuff. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. It, feels like he really appreciates it feels like you're stealing. It. You go to a junior high basketball game and you think you're at the NBA Finals. Like, oh, that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. Like, I can't, I'm almost giddy. Like, I can't believe I get to be here. Yeah. You know, and, or a swim meet and you're sitting there and you feel like you're at the Olympics. Hit the bottom of the net on this one. Okay. The bottom of the 50 net? to 1 hot. Yeah. Like, swish it. Oh. I you like, miss no, it. No, like, make it. No. Perfect. There you go. Definitely a little bit of a New Englander. I hear once in a while I slip in a yeah. New England slang. Yeah. Not often. Not car. Uh, not car. Not that. I'm sure I say, and I don't say pizza. 
We've been blessed to have 17 years here because we were fortunate enough to be part of an organization that was winning. And it's very, very rare. They just have been blessed just like we have. Right, and so a lot of success. I think they just, you know, they don't understand. I think someday they will. I think when they get old enough to look back and go, you know, and they read about it or they, you know, or they're comparing eras or what have you, there'll be a time when they look back and go, Dad, you know, that was, that was crazy that you guys were, we were able to do that. You have to keep reminding yourself now, like this is not normal. You know, you have to really appreciate how special it's been and how special it is to be here. We never could have envisioned. This is so much bigger, I think, than yeah. what we ever, even in our own personal lives, we just never saw all of this. And mm -hmm. it's, um, I don't take a second of it for granted. And I would have, I would have absolutely still come to Foxborough in waist deep snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Luckily, our winters are a little more mild <laughs> now. No question. No question. <laughs>